G'day folks, it's Cortezarino, and today I'm going to show you how to build my villager trading hall for 1.14.4, and look how simple it is guys. There is zero redstone, and even though I've built this out of funny, nice materials like sea lanterns and stuff like that, you can build the entire thing out of stone, wood, and wool if you want to. You just need a few torches so you don't get the zombies spawn. But the good thing about this trading hall, guys, is it is also an infinite villager breeder. You do not need to breed your villagers at a separate location. Okay, so down to the nitty gritty. How does this thing work? Well, up the back, we have a pen of breeding villagers. And for the best breeding, guys, you want to have villagers that do not have a trade. So you can start off with just two guys in here and throw bread over the stone wall. And they will breed up to about 11. We've got 11 beds up the back here. And the villagers think that they can access the bed through those trapdoors. So they will make babies. But they can't actually get to them. They can't sleep. So we don't have to worry about iron golems spawning in here. So just to make sure that you don't have any villagers with trades in here that will slow down your breeding, just make sure when you bring your first two villagers in here, you don't trade with either of them because that will lock them into their profession. So once we've bred up a few guys, we want to start putting them into the trading hall and figuring out if, uh, if they have good trades or not. So what you can do is in front of one of these stalls. First, we're going to place down a lectern here, but it could be any workstation. And we're going to open that fence gate behind there. And then you just come up the front here, and we're going to open one of these fence gates. And there we go. He's look, He's seen the workstation, and he's using his own AI to get to it. So sometimes this doesn't happen immediately because they only look for their workstations at certain times of the day. But all you have to do is wait a little while and he will eventually make his way up here. Once he does, you can close the fence gate behind him and he's locked in place. And then you can check out if he's got a good trade or not. So we can't see what he's got there. So what we can do is we can break the workstation. He'll lose his trade and we can replace it. And then we can check again. Thorns 3. That is excellent. So what you'd want to do now is trade with this guy and then that trade is locked in place and he'll never, never lose it. And so you can just continue bringing new guys in. If when you open this fence gate, a like this guy's running in there, but let's say one of these guys slipped out, that's fine, just close the fence gate, and the next time that all the villagers look for their workstations, the guy that you have roaming around the back there will see this one, and he will head towards it. And I think it's best to load up the cells furthest away from our breeding room first, just because the, whoops, can't access that, where are you? Ah, there we go. Just because as you get more and more villagers in here, there are more distractions, so you don't want the guys having to walk too far to get to their workstation. And the other really cool feature of this design, guys, is uh, that annoying problem where a villager will forget which workstation is his, and he'll lock onto another workstation somewhere else. And that means if he can't access his workstation, he will not reset his trades. And, uh, and you're unable to trade with him. But the good thing is, once a villager is inside his cell, he cannot see out of it. He cannot see any other workstations at all. That's because that fence gate is an impenetrable barrier. He thinks he can't pathfind past it. So he will not see anything beyond there. And then out the front, we have a double layer of carpet. And this does the same thing. He cannot see past it. So he can't see any other workstations. And he also can't see any of the beds up here. So if he was locked onto a bed before, he has now forgotten it. And we're able to throw more food to these villagers. And they will keep on breeding. And the only other thing I will mention, while we've got the workstations out the front here, it's a little bit hard to get the XP. You have to come in close for it to reach you through the trapdoor. But what you can do is once you've filled up an entire wall with villagers and you're happy with them and you're not going to change them, 
you can move their workstations to underneath the fence gate and they can still access them. And now you can get up nice and close, trade with them, get all the XP, and it also looks a little bit neater at the front. Oh yeah, and there is one final thing to mention. What happens when you decide you don't want a villager anymore and you want to get rid of him? Well, just to save us the hassle of putting a drop chute underneath him where you can release a trapdoor and maybe drop him onto a magma block, the absolute easiest way is just to light the block beside him with a flint and steel and he'll burn up. It takes three goes to get him to burn away. But the good thing is this doesn't count as a player kill on our villager, which will cause us to have to pay more for our trades, which we don't want. So it takes a little bit longer, but this is the easiest way to do it. Just make sure once you light the block to quickly put it out by left clicking, otherwise our, our fence gate will burn away. Okay, let's get started with the tutorial and I recommend building this underground just to make sure your villages are nice and safe. But if you decide to build this above ground, just make sure you put a roof over it so your villagers don't get struck by lightning. So to begin, I want you to dig a hole in the ground that is one block deep and is 15 blocks by 23. And I'm gonna use a lot of different materials here, but remember you can build the entire thing out of stone if you want to. So to begin, we're gonna use stone bricks. I'm gonna come out three blocks on that side and three blocks on this side. And we're just going to continue that right up to the end on our long sided walls. So this will be 23 blocks long. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to put another floor right in the middle. This is going to be five blocks wide and we're gonna run it right down the center. So we're leaving a little groove of two blocks on each side of this. So I'm gonna use cyan terracotta. and I'm actually going to make a, a nice line of sea lens down the middle just to light the place up. And once you've done that, we're going to add these blocks on the side. And I'm using iron blocks here, nice and expensive, but remember, you can do whatever block you like. So we're gonna leave a one block gap here and then start placing our blocks, just leaving a one block gap between them and placing them against the stone bricks. And once you've done that, we're going to put a layer of carpet down on the ground. And then once you've done that, we are going to add a second layer of carpet above that carpet. And that's what it should look like. So next I want you to grab another block. I'm using bone blocks here. And where this carpet meets the stone brick, on top of the stone brick, I want you to build a pillar of three blocks. And once you've got your pillars in place, behind them, on top of our stone bricks, we're going to build another pillar, but this is only two blocks tall. Okay, so you should have 11 trading cells on each side now. So right up the top, I'm going to put some sea lens. Now, of course, if you're building this early game, you're not going to have sea lens, so you can use whatever block you like. Just remember, if it's not a block that emits light, then you will need to throw down a bunch of torches up the back here, just so you don't get any beasties spawning. And also, on the front of your sea lens, that's where you can place your sign to say what that villager is trading. Okay, so now you want to put your trapdoors in place and this just stops the villager from escaping while we're breaking and replacing his workstation. So you want to place it from this side, just put it on top of the stone brick and flick it up. Now you just have to be a little bit careful when you're using the trading hall, but you don't flick it down and let the guy out. So it is better to use iron trapdoors here and then you can just place a lever on the bottom of these bone blocks and power it and that will flick the trapdoor up and that way you know they're never going to escape. But early game, you're not going to have that much iron. And the last thing to do to finish off our little trading cells here is to put our fence gates in. So we're just putting these on the top block of these two high pillars. Okay, so pick which end your breeding villages are going to be. Mine are going to be up this end. I'm going to grab my bone blocks again. I'm going to put a three high pillar right there next to the carpet. And another one there, and then I'm just going to replace the blocks in the ground here with my cyan and run a stone brick wall over the front. This could be any kind of wall or even a fence. Okay, come around to this side and right next to this bone block pillar, I'm going to put in some more lighting. 
so we don't get beastie spawn. Just two sea lands there with spruce fence gates on top. And then I'm going to put another pillar of bone blocks on each side. And then run two blocks in between them, just like so. And then just for a bit more light between these two bone block pillars, I'm going to run another line of sea lens. You obviously don't need this much light. Just throw torches down if that's all you've got. And then I'm just going to replace the floor in here with some red terracotta. Okay, let's start putting some walls up so the villagers don't run off into the distance. So on each side of these fence gates, just knock out nine blocks in a little square. And I'm going to put some red terracotta. This is exactly the same on each side. Now what you can do is, I'm going to use iron blocks here, but yes, once again, <laughs> you don't need to use iron. I'm just going to put a big wall around our floor. And now you can see when you let the villagers out, they have a nice little pathway to all our trading cells. And what I would do is right on the end here, just in case you ever need to get in there, just put a fence gate and do exactly that on this side as well. And the next thing we're going to do, guys, is put up our trapdoor wall so the villagers think they can pass through the trapdoors to get to the beds, but they can't reach them. So you want to place the trapdoors from this side just place three on the ground, another three on top, just holding shift while you place, and another three on top there, and then you can flick them all up. And make sure you've got them in the same spot that I do, like right up against that red terracotta, and that way the beds will be far enough from the villagers that they can't enter them. So I'm just going to place 11 beds here, because I don't want to breed up more than 11 villagers, because it gets too cramped in there. And that is your trading hall 100% complete. I told you it was super duper easy, guys. So all you have to do now is bring in two villagers that don't have a profession, put them in this little breeding pen, and start to feed them. And the only other thing I would mention is that if you want to make this bigger, rather than just extending this hallway, I would probably build, have a, a little center room and just build another one off in that direction. Maybe another one off in that direction so you can have different hallways for different trades. Like maybe tridents down here, armor um, in that direction. You get the idea. And uh, the last thing to mention is once you've filled up all your villages in here and you don't need to breed anymore, what you can do is these guys up the back, you can just throw down a bunch of workstations for them. So composters if you want and then just end up with a bunch of farmers in here. And then you can trade with them as well. Although you would probably want to put another little beam across the front there. Just so they don't manage to jump from their workstation and over the fence. So that's it guys. There will be a world download in the description if you want to grab that to copy this design. Or if you just want to put some villages in it and make sure that it works. Just make sure if you are testing it that you have your daylight cycle turned on or that uh, that messes with the villagers so leave a like guys if this video helped you out cheers i'm cortez arena i'll see you later